The Ozonet project aims to bring live data such as news, weather, videos, books, Wikipedia articles and audio broadcast to the world via receivers called Dreamcatcher. And they need a free satellite service. I know you're going to tell me an internet connection provides the same data, but the Ozonet's satellite broadcast is resilient and receivable in remote areas. It will continue to work in disasters and does not require a monthly subscription. In this video, I will do an unboxing of the current kit you see on the screen and show you how to install it and how to configure so we could browse what's available on the network right now. I am based in Europe, thanks to my French accent, and the service is also available for you guys in North America. So stay tuned. I wanted to play it safe and I bought both the Dreamcatcher and the Bullseye LNB straight from the Ozonet shop. I see it as well as a way to support the project from buying there. You could of course buy the Bullseye on different shop as it's a universal LNB. Also something else I wanted to mention, if you decide to buy both of the kit here, you might have to pay additional customs depending where you live. Now let's see what's inside the bull's eye. So it's pretty simple here. You only have the LNB with here like a protection for the cable. And from that, it's up to you if you want to install it on a dish or use it like this. I will pass for the dish and just print a support from that we will see how it goes in a video. Now let's see what is the content here of the board. So it's in a kind of lunch box and you're protected with some electrostatics bag. And there are different parts. You could see ESP32 with its antenna micro SD reader here. I've already put industrial grade micro SD card. Time will tell if it's a good idea. And here you have USB A uh, port, but unfortunately it's not being used at that time. And on the right side you have USB C for powering the board, so that's pretty neat. Keep in mind it is needed to have at least 2.5 amp for your charger. So I guess no, that's pretty available or common. If you could use maybe a charger from a high-end phone or even a PSU from a Raspberry Pi. And on top right here, you have all like antenna connectors, but keep in mind here for the SMA, it's not for Wi-Fi extension or something else. From the forum, I've read it's based for uh, factory testing. Here, I'm not sure if I will be able to, to perform any test and show what's going on. But what we will uh, use in the end is like the coax um, antenna port over here. So for that, I really bought like the most random generic uh, cable, which might do the trick here. I have like at least five meters and we'll, we will see if it's uh, okay, if I'm not like losing too much uh, signal power with this uh, type of cable. I was looking First, if someone already made a design for this specific LNB, and it was already the case thanks to Ryan. So Ryan, I have downloaded your model and put a like. Now, what is really interesting in this model, Ryan designed a ring you could just 
used to squeeze the LNB and this ring could be attached via a nut or just via a screw one slash four one which I use on a tripod. So you could see I have printed this in yellow because it's really flashy yellow, black and red and it is PLA. So if I decided to keep outside or even use with high temperature, it should hold it. And now I also use like 25% infill. But keep in mind, this design is meant to be used for mobile solutions. So I'm not going to leave it outside all the time, especially with the screw setup, it might not uh, last. Because as you can see, I didn't use any bolt. So that might not be the best idea for long term. So now I have added my tripod. So it's really a cheap one. As I said, it doesn't need to be outside all the time, just when the weather conditions are okay. So once I have set it up, you could see I have still enough room on the back to install the cable. And from here, I even have a, a bubble level. What a luxury to aim to the right satellite. All the documentation related to the flashing is present on the forums.ozonet.is. And here you just click on wiki. You will end up on this page here from Syed, the main contributor to this project, thanks to him. Here you have like a documentation in PDF with all the steps you need to proceed on Windows. And I say Windows because it is a mention about the ESP32 flash binary uh, program. But since it's ESP, you could like also use ESP flash. And here John V on the forum have mentioned about the wall command. So it's not pretty different from any ESP32. So next step for me is to download all this file from the latest firmware and flash it. We're going to do that right now. A prompt telling me if I want to allow the connection for GTAG. So the board is recognized. Now what I will do, I will copy paste the command from John. I will hit enter. So you could see the little LED lights that was blinking. And I will wait a couple of seconds. And here we go. Flash is completed. Since the flash completed successfully, now I could connect to a new Wi-Fi network. So I will look with my laptop for the SSID OZNET TX with TX in caps lock. Once I connect, I need to put the password and the password is OZNET. Once I'm connected to the Wi-Fi network, I will type this following IP address. 192.168.4.1 and we have here the dashboard of the Dreamcatcher. So here is the setup. I just have like power supply here and the Dreamcatcher over all the cable and here is the LNB which is currently installed poorly. We'll see the value in a few. Here is the best I was able to do in terms of like signal reception. So my setup is pretty bad. I'm not sure if even the weather helped me or not. It's really cloudy today. It was rainy in Europe and my setup is like really clumsy. I already noticed a different way to improve it 
because the way I hold the LNB and it's not helping me in terms of like a precision when I need to um, move it to have like a right screw an angle and for this I will need to think about a better um, solution. No, in terms of like a reception of file, I was pretty happy because I was able to kind of download some news. So if we browse here like to um, the dashboard, we have the first uh, link, of course, the dashboard with the quality reception and all the different details in terms of um, CPU consumption, uh, memory. And the current download we are seeing here at some news that are fetched and broadcast to all the, the network. So here, what I've noticed, maybe it's due to my uh, reception quality because you could see a lot of CRC error here. Um, so despite I received some packets, maybe it's not enough. And I suspect this file here, um, maybe a news in Arabic is going to hang here and I won't be able to download it completely. So it will stay here on my micro SD and be truncated. So sadly, this news I won't be able to read. It. If I go to files, I could browse all the different contents from the micro SD. So you could see a locked folder, a TMP folder, and the news folder. So new, the news folder contains all the HTML news page that were uh, downloaded and as you can see some of the news here are a bit outdated but I guess I have a lot of files to download right now so here I could click on this one and of course it's going to open there is not much to read here and another one here let's say better news maybe if you're a fan of uh, Coachella unfortunately cannot go it's too pricey for me anyway and you have a lot of text to read here so that could be interesting if you are really far away for any cell phone tour and even no Starlink reception or whatsoever you really want to be resilient that could be a use case to be updated with this setup no, I close it and we could go to message. So message here, this section, I was not not quite sure if it's a way to display all the different news message we are receiving or if it's related to amateur radio. To go more for, on amateur radio, I will need to skip this because I don't have any license. So I cannot operate and transmit and even chat using all like so the settings here and hopefully you could find more uh, specialized people on YouTube covering this topic I'm sure even on for the forum people are talking about it now regarding the two of this um, Wi-Fi uh, section so here it will cover like all the settings on the access point made by the Dreamcatcher. So if you want to connect using a standalone device as I'm doing right now, or if you want to use your Dreamcatcher to connect to your own network. In the receiving tab, you have here all the settings. So depending if you're like in North America or in Europe, you will use different um, frequency and satellite. So in Europe, it's Astra 3B and in the US is SES2. I was really excited to plug all the cable and run the Dreamcatcher and see what I could get. I hope it will answer some of your questions and I'm sure I will do another video and I will get a better reception and maybe a better weather to do that. Then I will show you additional files because I know we could even uh, receive Wikipedia articles. So stay tuned.